Welcome to the Pitcher Nail Down. I'm Jason Gilbo, J Gilbo 11. With me is Russell Clay at Russell J Clay. Taking a look at tonight's pitching slate here, and uh, a little depleted in comparison to last night. But obviously, Johnny Cueto taking on the Padres comes in as the top guy, and then we got a kind of a lot of, I guess you could say, second tier guys. I mean, outside of maybe Liriano uh, going for the rest of the night. Yeah, and a uh, big shout out to Anthony Owens. Uh... He gave me he he's in love with Chase as much as I am. Uh, he tweeted at me last night after. I mean, Chase almost had a perfect game going against the the Cubbies. So uh, happiest guy in baseball, really uh, pulling it together and making some happy moments. Well, you know who wasn't happy? This guy because I had you <laughs> yeah. know a Cub stack going and figured <laughs> you know this isn't a great spot tonight, but no. I know, me too. I had it too, but it was it was like all right. Chase Anderson, 0.1% ownership. You know what? Just roll it out. Let's see it, Chase. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. And uh, we do we do like uh, chilling on Twitter. So I'm always on there. Hit me up, good or bad. Um, all right, let's get into this. I think we kind of disagree on the slate for pitchers. We do. Um, I, I think it's pretty straightforward, but maybe that's just because I'm – not as intelligent as you, or maybe I'm smarter. I don't know. We'll find <laughs> out as we go through this. Yeah, we'll, we will see at 1.30 Eastern time tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we we sort of disagree. I, I, I think there's a little bit like some red flags on some of these guys in comparison to the matchup, I guess you could say. Um, right. I mean, we'll kind of jump into it, you know, game by game here, so... Uh, seven o'clock. You got Nationals and Mets. Uh, seven and a half over under. Basically, a pick 'em here on Mets minus one hundred four favorites. Uh, Cologne going up against Gio Gonzalez. Uh, Gio's pitched well this year. I, I definitely don't mind him in GPPs uh, tonight. Uh, not a cash game arm for me, but mm-hmm. you know, looking at this Mets, uh, you know, team, they strike out a ton against. Uh, lefties and uh, a twenty six percent strikeout rate this season. Twentieth in WOBA. And, you know, they also could be without David Wright. Uh, they could be without Lucas Duda again. So that kind of depreciates that lineup. I mean, he's borderline cash on DraftKings as an SP2. I, I think I'll kind of revert to that. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I don't think this is a necessarily good night for pitching. Um, he, I don't think he's – yeah, he doesn't qualify as a um, cash option, but I think he's a nice tournament arm. Um he'll probably end up in that 10 to 20 percent ownership range which i'm okay with i think if you can get 20 to 25 points for him that sort of is higher higher end range of outcomes i think you'll be happy with that um but the guy in this matchup is cologne 6600 on DraftKings. is he in play um because at that price tag on um dk he doesn't really have to do that much uh, I, I don't think he's in play for me. Okay. I think uh, I think I'm going to be spending up. Uh, I mean, I think that's one of the things that we notice about today's slate is, you know, you have Cueto, and if you want to pay pay down to the second spot, like there's not a, a great guy to do that with. Mm-hmm. And I think Colon kind of fits that bill. I mean, I know he's been solid at times this season, but um, I mean, the Nationals' offense hasn't been great, but I don't I don't think there's a ton there for Cologne. Right, so you don't think he, because uh, we're all just rooting. If you're pitching against the Nationals, just rooting to get to Ryan Zimmerman. But uh, it's it's a little easier said than done to get there. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I'm I'm in agreement there that he's probably not really even worth a punt play. Yeah, I don't think he is. I mean, I, I can understand the logic of playing him just because he has been pretty pretty solid this year, but. I mean, he doesn't miss a ton of bats, and he's on a, a ton of hard ball percentage, so I'm kind of staying away from him a little bit. That makes sense. Uh, next one here, you got Mariners and Orioles. Uh, we saw the Seattle put on a shellacking last night, and we saw Wade Miley, another pitcher, kind of frustrate you if you had a, a Baltimore sack going. Um, but today, Taiwan Walker, Chris Tillman, over-under of eight, Baltimore minus 111 favorites. Both these pitchers have pitched very well this season. Um I mean, you obviously don't like the ballpark. You don't like these offenses going up against each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm curious to see what kind of happens in in this game. And I, I think both these guys are 
certainly in play for GPPs because they do have plenty of upside. Yeah. Um, Walker, I just – I have a hard time pl- pitching anyone against the, the Orioles. That's just kind of something I've – stayed away from um he does have a decent price but yeah i'm probably staying away from that tillman is an interesting tournament arm i think he has that upside and we have seen quite a few times this year obviously the mariners have that upside but they have been shut down in quite a few games this year as well so i I do think he has some upside um and i'd be interested what his ownership percentage is but i i actually don't mind him at that price for tournaments yeah, I mean, his numbers are pretty much, you know, backed by, you know, a solid, I mean, 2.5 ADRA, 2.65 FIP. Uh, he's keeping the ball in the park this year, which is nice to see. Mm. Uh, you're not in love with the ground ball rate, but, I mean, a 10.6% swing strike rate is pretty solid for Tillman. I mean, the more you look into it, I don't definitely don't mind it. Um, you kind of like if you you look at years in the past and you're like, Oh my God, you've always kind of picked on Tillman. And then all of a sudden you find yourself like, Oh my God, I might roster him. It's like, what, what's happened? <laughs> and, yeah. It, and that's, it, that's how I feel. And it, I mean, at that price tag, it's, I, I wish he was still a bit lower. 9,700 just seems so steep. I, I just feel like I might as well spin up to Liriano for, for a 700 more. That's, that's a lot like Dion Waiters for the Thunder, where we've been making fun of him for like four years now, and now he's like making threes in the Western Conference Finals and, and making layups and not making turnovers. It's, it's just like that. So <laughs> sometimes players do become competent. I don't know what happens, but yeah. Um, intriguing, I'd say. Tillman on Fandle 7,900 just seems more appropriately priced Yeah, uh, in comparison to... I mean, being the fifth most expensive pitcher on today's slate at 9,700. Right. And I think it's just like Geo in that ballpark for 400 less. So I think it's just kind of on DK where he falls in between. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just not the most ideal matchup. But I mean, I can certainly see playing him. And I think if you're rolling out multiple lives, he might be worth a shot or two. So kind of like, let's hope it doesn't end like this, but like Stroman yesterday, where he's super overpriced on DK, but a reasonable price on FanDuel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then you're just hoping for different outcomes, right? Obviously, yeah. we're not worried about. We are not a re- results based podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> you know what I mean? Process. Yeah. Uh, and then walk on the other side. You were kind of staying away. Yeah, I think I'm staying away from that just because the Orioles' offense. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they'll bounce back tonight, and. Um, you know, against right-handers, they've been very solid third and low by the season. Um, mm-hmm. Big 202 team ISO, so I'm kind of with you there. Uh, next game here, Braves and Pirates, Julio Tehran, uh, Francisco Liriano. Pittsburgh, big, minus 195 favorites here, over-under of seven. Uh, I like Liriano here. Um, as far as DK Cash goes, this is where I think you and I differ a little bit. Mm. Um, and I, I don't mind it because I don't mind a lot of it because there's not a lot lower. Um, but I think you should just err with some caution that his walk rate is just extremely high. And he, yeah. he does give you those innings where he makes you feel very uneasy. I, I definitely get that. Um, I just look at that strikeout rate since 2015, 9.88 um, per nine. And, and I just look at this Braves offense, top three people in the lineup are lefties. And I, I totally get the concerns, um, but he's probably pro- – uh, he might be my top tournament arm tonight. Just oh, tur- to- tournament arm for sure. Like I, I'm all aboard on a tur- tournament with him. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, I think people are going to look at him. I mean, I don't necessarily mind him as a second cash game option for paying up. I don't think you absolutely have to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's where I kind of was like, okay, maybe Geo for a little bit less is a fine SP2 option to kind of save you that cash. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, you look at the Braves' offense, and, yeah, I mean, you're picking anyone against them right at this point, and they do strike out a, a ton more against lefties than they do against righties this year. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I think he, I'm rolling with him on DK as my second pitcher in cash too. Um, mm-hmm. With Kyoto, I don't know. It just seems it's not nearly as expensive as Bumgarner uh, Kershaw last night, and I think you'll be able to fit some some decent bats in a lineup with them. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And I, I think you look lower, 
and there's not a ton that you feel safe with. So mm-hmm. I, I think you are kind of forced into paying up there. And uh, I'm avoiding Terrain tonight. What are you? What are you doing with him? Yeah, same thing. I mean, unlikely shot to get a win. Yeah. Um, I mean, he struggles against lefties. This Pirates team doesn't have a ton of lefties, but overall, I, yeah. I mean, I'm staying away. I can't see a ton of upside against this team. Um, they just won. They just don't strike out a ton, uh, and also they uh, a top five woba and against right handed pitching this season. Right. So yeah, I think it's kind of a stay away situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, next one here, you got Rays and Blue Jays. Jake Orizzi, R.A. Dickey, 8.5 over under. Toronto minus 123 favorites. Uh, this one's kind of just a stay away game in general. Uh, I'm not a big fan of yeah. Orizzi on the road uh, in the Rogers Center. I did do a one second pause and then Orizzi for a second because Batista's out. And then you, thankfully, I have you around to smack me down. Um, yeah, these are kind of, it's not that they're bad options, but the upside just isn't there for what you need for a tournament tonight, and they're certainly not cash arms. So, yeah, I think this is just an avoid. Yeah, I mean, Odorizzi, home run prone. Uh, I hate his ground ball rate. I mean, it's it's fine in the trop. And, I mean, we saw him get burned by the A's in the trop for a couple of homers. And, um, yeah. I mean, overall, I mean, 38% hard ball rate a lot of this season. It's kind of like pe- pe- people are seeing him well right now, and it's kind of a mm-hmm. – something needs to, to change with him before I kind of start locking him in. Right. And Dickey, on the other hand, Dickey's just – you just mm-hmm. a guy you don't even talk about anymore. <laughs> it's been a struggle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next one here, you got Reds and Indians and Mike Klinger, uh right-hander, young guy for Cleveland going out there, uh, and Brandon Finnegan for the Reds. Um, mm-hmm. Over under of eight tier, uh, you got this game as a pick em. Not really sold on either of these arms. They're probably two of the, the weaker ones on the slate. Now, if it's Clevinger, I'm out. But if it's Clevenger... I'm in. <laughs> that probably means he's got a nice beard and a lot of hair on his back if he's Clevenger. So nope, he is a baby face guy with long hair. <laughs> yeah, then I'm definitely out because it's definitely Clevener. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're not touching either of these guys tonight. I don't think. Yeah, and uh, next one here you got Astros and White Sox. Doug Fister, Matt Latos. This one's another pick 'em. Eight and a half over under in U.S. cellular. Uh, Neither, I know Latos has pitched well, but obviously he's a guy who's you know, due to regress, and and uh, there's just kind of no way. Yeah, no way. Hard pass. Uh, yeah, and, that's uh, even a harder. That's even a harder pass than the uh, the Rays Blue Jays game. You think so? Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Uh, next one here, you got the Cubs and Brewers, and thankfully no Chase Anderson to ruin my night. Um, <laughs> We do have you do have John Lackey and Jimmy Nelson, eight and a half over under. Cubs are big favorites here. The price tag for Lackey is just it's high. Outrageous. Uh, it, it it really is. I mean, it, he does have upside though. I mean, there is some upside yeah. with him. We've seen the strikeout rate this season, and I like it a lot. Um yeah, I mean his twelve point two percent swinging strike percentage this year. Um I'm not a big fan of the ballpark, but I mean, no Ryan Braun uh, in that lineup. I mean, he's going through some injuries. It, it's it's a pretty depleted lineup, and I I kind of think Lackey might be a little bit under on tonight. I think I, I can I feel actually a little bit safer with him than than Liriano, as obvious as that sounds. Uh, yeah, no, I I think he's an interesting tournament arm just to be different, and it could definitely pay off with some upside. But uh, when you're just looking at it. In terms of the value and where he's at, I like the other guys around him more, um, especially Aliriano or whatever. But um, it definitely has high upside to get the win, obviously. And I think we're going back to the well with this Cub stack again, right? Even oh, though it failed sure. us last night. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to let Chase Anderson ruin my night and ruin my <laughs> ruin my month. <laughs> oh man! Uh, next one here. Oh, obviously, Jimmy Nelson. We just talked about a stack against him, so now that's an indicator. I am stacking. Sorry, Jimmy. Uh, Next one here, you got Rockies and Cardinals. Uh, Chris Russ and Adam Wainwright. uh, St. Louis minus 164. Um, Favorites there, eight and a half over under. I'm sorry. Wainwright is just... He's got about a. He's got on DraftKings. He's got about a ceiling of fifteen points. Yeah. Uh, in, even at fifteen hundred, I just don't. I I can't get behind him. There's no way. 
if if we're being realistic, we really can't get behind Wainwright even as I mean that price. They're, they're really making you think now with that price, but uh, his ceiling right now just isn't where you want it to be. Obviously, if he gets you fifteen, you're okay with that, but that it doesn't look like he has much upside beyond that. So um, I think he's a fade even at that price. Yeah, I, I mean I. I really can't use him. I just, I mean, one, I, I, I do think this Colorado team, yes, they're getting away from cores, but overall, um, it, it's just a situation to avoid at this point. I mean, I think it, it's time to put him in the ground in as far as the DFS world and just move on, yeah. move on. Wainwright's been good to us in the past, but uh, there's just not, not any upside. And I know the price tag's intriguing, but... Yeah. Wayne right man it's we need like the taps playing in the background like a like a sad salute to a guy who's just treading off to war <laughs> like like uh I, I should pour out my my water onto my macbook air and sacrifice my computer for him <laughs> i wouldn't go that far <laughs> oh okay i didn't know how sentimental we were getting here so uh, let me know one. adam <laughs> chris russin uh no, no. thanks yeah. <laughs> no uh, next one here, you got Red Sox and Royals. This is the game two of the doubleheader. David, David Price, Edison Volquez. Price has not been great this year, um, but, I mean, 2.55 FIP leads us to believe he's been pretty unlucky. But uh, overall, I mean, the swing strike rates there, the K percentage. This Royals team, um, I mean, they haven't been great against lefties this season. They don't strike out a ton. I'm not just a big fan. I don't think there's upside there at that price tag. I mean, with this K percentage, there could be, but I think I, I feel better with Lackey, Liriano, and Cueto. Interesting. I was going to ask that, who you feel better with between Price and Lackey. So so you'd go Lackey there? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, you look at the Royals, they just don't strike out a ton. Um, yeah. You know, you, you look at what he's done against, against, you know, teams that he struck out a lot, and it's like guys like Houston, Atlanta, um, Toronto. I mean, it's in fact it was Cleveland the first time. It was teams that that struck out at a really high rate against lefties, so mm. it, it made sense. Uh, and you look at his starts against the Yankees, and, and that it's the the upside was was kind of limited. Um, so I think that's kind of where I where I stand with him. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Um, unfortunately, but I, I mean, I do think there is some upside here. I, I think he could shut this Royals team down, um, and that he obviously. Any Red Sox pitcher has a good shot at a win right now with how their offense is playing. So, um, obviously not a all in on David Price night, but I do think he's a tournament arm for sure. I, I'm also curious to see what kind of lineup they're going to spit out in that second one. I mean, if they're missing a guy or two, I mean, maybe if you don't see a mm-hmm. Salvador Perez or a Renzo Kane, or you don't see someone like that, I mean, you're right. kind of like that's that gives a nice bump to Price. Definitely. And uh, Volquez, very hard to pick on this Red Sox team. And uh, I won't be. <laughs> <'Cause> there's, <laughs> there's no way with the way they're swinging the bat right now. Hey, you got to give him credit. Uh, Vegas is giving him respect right now with only projecting the Red Sox for four runs. So um, th- that's respect at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, probably not playing him, but decent arm. He's a decent arm, but not in a good spot tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Can't do it. Yankees and Diamondbacks, Nathan Yovaldi, Shelby Miller, over under of nine. Hmm. I know. I think this is going to be a hotbed for, for offense tonight. Yeah. You look at Yovaldi, he's had some pretty decent upside this year, but again, I'm not really one to target the stem backs lineup, so probably an avoid tonight. Yeah, I mean, he's been tough on, tough on right-handers, but... Uh, overall, I mean, I just can't see that upside happening tonight. I mean, mm-hmm. in, especially in Chase Field. Right. Shelby Miller, on the other hand, no. <laughs> I, I I know he, he pitched well in his last start, but overall, um, mm-hmm. against this Yankees team, I just think, no. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> Sometimes that's all you need to say. Yeah. Uh, next one here, you got the Dodgers and the Angels. Over under of eight, uh, Mike Bolsinger, Nick Trapiano. Um, and this game is in uh, the Angels Stadium there, so the Dodgers are going to get the DH. That's one thing to note that they they swapped. Um, I'm not really looking at either of these teams. I mean, Trapiano is a guy who's been interesting in the past, uh, just because his strikeout rate's been pretty high. Um, 
but overall, I mean, it's been kind of he's been kind of mediocre of late. I'm not sure I can get behind him against this Dodgers team that, yes, they haven't been great against right-handed pitching this season, but I think there's just better options up top to pay up for. He's one of those guys where you initially look at that price and go, okay, I think I can get behind this. And then you start building a case for it. And then you just slowly back away and you're like, Oh, maybe not. All right. I'm going to look somewhere else. So yeah, I, I just don't think he's a guy you can necessarily get behind. Uh, even as a pump play. I, I like him more than Wainwright. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you, if you know, the question arose of, Hey, Wainwright or Tropiano, I like Tropiano more. Mm. Okay, I can respect that. So I, I mean, I won't be finding myself really digging down there tonight, but yeah, it's it's intriguing. Um, Bullsinger, no, a uh, guy who hasn't been a really great arm. I know this Angels offense hasn't been good this season, but still, uh, this is a guy who just doesn't miss bats. Yeah. Um, does that have any real upside? And I know he's cheap, but not really playable. And really, when you look at his recent past, the only games he's actually done well is against the Braves and the Padres, and we kind of know how that how that whole game goes, you know? Yeah, I mean, you and I could could likely do well against the, the Padres and Braves, so. Mm, based on my softball hitting abilities, he would probably, uh, I might get a walk here and there, but other do than you that, walk a lot? Do you walk a lot in slow pitch <laughs> softball? I'm just really bad. Um, so <laughs> do you lean in? Do you turn into the pitch? Uh, just... No. Okay. So I try. I, I Adam LaRoche was my favorite player growing up, which should tell you a lot <laughs> out there, folks. Um, so I would imitate his swing, and I don't generate a lot of power by doing that, unless it's wiffle ball. So, yeah, rough. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's finish this thing up before All Russ right. breaks into his. Uh throwback softball days yeah giants and padres johnny cueto drew pomeranz uh cueto top arm on the night for me i know you're in agreement cash game Mm -hmm. he's he's certainly in play six and a half over under um uh, you know against this this pirate pirates padres team uh dead last in woba i mean this season um 25 percent strikeout rate so now that the braves are out of the basement (laughs) um they can throw a little a little party but Cueto, by far the, the top guy for me tonight. Yeah, and I mean, when you look at the Padres since 2014, pretty much everything that pops up is last or the Braves are last, and they're chasing them down for last. So um, this is a great spot for Cueto. Um, and I think, I man, I really like the tournament upside with him and Liriano together tonight, um, if you're going to go that direction, and, and maybe even for cash for me. Um, so that's probably the direction I'm going. But, yeah, Q8 on cash for sure. Yeah. And you look at Pomerantz, I mean. Intriguing. I wish he is. Not, I wish he was kind of facing a different team, or I at least yeah. wish the Giants struck out more. Mm-hmm. Because now that Pomerantz is kind of priced up, I mean, 9K on FanDuel is pretty steep. He wants some upside there. Um, you you know, 8,900. And he's a guy who's likely not going to get the win. So you're mm-hmm. kind of hoping that in the past, I mean, he's he's pitched against some really quality arms this season. Um, and you can kind of feel comfortable even when he's not getting the win. His strikeouts will back him up. And against this Giants team that just doesn't strike out a ton, I mean, 17% against lefties this year, mm-hmm. and they also rank 10th in Woba. I don't see the upside there um, at that price tag. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you. And again, I'm, if you're really high on Q8, it's tough to get behind Pomeranz, you know? Yeah, I. it was different because, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I – uh, Pomerantz pitched up against Kershaw and he was priced at 6800 and yeah, I, I locked in both of them and, and although Pomerantz didn't get the win, he got you know 20 plus DK points and mm-hmm. it, it paired up nicely even pitching two guys in the same game and that just doesn't appeal to me here tonight. Yeah, and now the, the secret's kind of out in terms of his salary, so 2k more makes pretty big difference. Yeah, definitely. Let's go wrap things up here with the pitcher nail down or aka the glory days for Russell Clay softball. <laughs> Open stance. Bang. <laughs> Be sure to check out DaddyFantasyCafe.com for all great tools and content.